Good morning and welcome again to Ask the Experts on Talk Radio 1190. Today we're with Roger Wakefield, expert plumber of Texas Green Plumbing, 972-442-4101 is his phone number. You can also try his website, www.texasgreenplumbing.com. Jeff Lindegren also here, gracing us with his presence, vice president of happiness, if you believe it, we managed to get him here, the vice president of happiness at Great Western Home Loans. You can try his website, www.gwloans.com, and 972-407-9900. 9900 is the way to get him on the phone. So Roger, we're going to pretend that Jeff's not here for a minute. Just That's easy. Yeah, we're going to we're just going to act like there's a wall there. There's nothing just cuz I'm wondering, we like him. He's fine. How has how exactly has Great Western helped Texas Green Plumbing that you that you brought him here with you today? It's like I said while ago, Jeff is a good connector, a, a good networker, a good relationship marketer. Understands connecting people's what it's about. It's not just if Jeff, every time he walked up to somebody, he says, hey, look, we want to do your loan for you. Mm-hmm. Okay, T- tell me, are you buying a house soon? Are you doing this? In in relationship marketing, it's not just about marketing yourself. It's about, look, I've got a whole group of people. Sure. And no matter what you're looking for, I can help you. Mm-hmm. And when people call me and say, look, I need a, a mason because – my daughter ran into the brick, mm-hmm. and it's right by the frost proof, and you're probably going to have to come fix that. It's like, okay, look, I've got a mason. Mm-hmm. I've got a mason for brick. I've got a mason for rock. Jeff is that kind of a connector. Right. And like I said earlier, when you walk into a networking event with Jeff or if Jeff's there, Jeff's looking around the room saying, Roger, do you know so-and-so? Right. Let me introduce you to them. Mm-hmm. And it, it's what it's all about. Well, getting to know people is, is fun. Mm-hmm, you know, sure. I, I mean, there some people are, are so interesting, and, and you you don't even know it. You could you could know them for years, uh, until you actually get to have a you know in depth conversation with them. You won't know that. Connecting the dots is what it's all about in the big big picture, and it's fun for me. It's fun for you, Roger. <clears throat> One of the biggest uh, throwbacks. Uh, well, not throwbacks. Not not the right word, Joe. Okay. Uh, okay. So I'll cut that one out. All right. So I get fo- folks uh, want to come to uh, networking events, uh, and they say, "Well, Jeff, I need a name tag." Mm-hmm. All right. And when I started this job, I, the first thing I did was I got a name tag. Yep. I threw away my name tags, and, and I get folks all the time at, at our company and others go, "I need them. I, I don't can't go. I don't have my name tag." Right. I go look. Your name tag is not helping you. Okay? Mm-hmm. It could be hurting you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes people don't want to talk to you if they know who you are or what you do, even if they don't know you, okay, because they go, oh, it's just somebody from that mortgage company that's going to ask me for business. Right. And that's not what you're there for. You're there to meet them and get to know them. And you know what? Be friends with them. Right. Just make friends. Right. Because people do business with their friends. And you were talking about the sort of wallflower mentality that can happen at these networking events where somebody just sort of stays by their wife and stands by the wall and stuff. And I feel like that's kind of the the freezing aspect of it is is you look around and some people just see a room full of people that are going to try to sell them something. You know, this this Facebook, uh, the everything. I have a 12-year-old in Mac, and she's always on her phone. She's FaceTiming. She's doing the Spotify. And the, it it's a lost art, I think. Mm-hmm. True socializing mm-hmm. w- without a phone, a device, mm-hmm. is a lost or a dying art, I think. Mm-hmm. I- and you, you've got to work at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, it, to, to be happy and fun you know, to yourself yeah. it is uh, all the time yeah. is not easy to do. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, you, you got to build yourself up for that. You right. know? If you're in a bad mood, you, know, you just got some bad news, not feeling well, then just don't go. Yeah, okay? sure. Because you don't want to leave that impression, you know. On anybody. Yeah. 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 I mean, heck, I, you know, sometimes I live off my reputation for a while because, you know, I'm busy doing other stuff, you mm-hmm. know, and that's okay, you know, uh, but leave a lasting good impression mm-hmm. is what I try to do. So let's talk about, let's, let's turn the tables now. Now, uh, Roger's not here, Jeff. So why did the vice president of happiness come do a radio show with a plumber? Well, he paid me. <laughs> uh, not yet. No. <laughs> well, uh, you, you know, it, Roger and I think very uh, similarly 
uh, in terms of marketing and advertising mm-hmm. and, and exposure. And th- this is another outlet for that. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a radio show as well on a competing station. Mm-hmm. And Roger uh, comes and helps uh, guest host that with me as well. Mm-hmm. But even if I didn't have that, uh, I would still network with Roger a lot because he is an influencer. Mm-hmm. And and he's be- become that really in a short period of time, right? And that's that's where I want to go. Mm-hmm. You know, it, everybody has to constantly grow and try to get better at what they're doing. This is a new challenge. Right? I I don't want to just sit back and make flyers about an open house and and just industry norm. Let's raise the bar higher. And Roger and I are both on the same wavelength in terms of that. What can we do to take it to another level? And, and get more exposure for our, our brand. Mm-hmm. So, Jeff, we've been talking a lot about your your online presence, your networking presence, your Facebook presence. Let's talk about home buying. What kind of recommendations can you give for home buyers right now? What kind of advice do you have? Well, great question. It depends on the type of and price range of home you're looking for. Sure. If you're if you're looking to stay under five hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars in the metroplex, whether you're a first time home buyer or you've never bought, uh, the game for that and it is a game is much different than it was ten years ago. Mm-hmm. It is extremely competitive, and I'm a very competitive person, so I call it a game and I put it all in in, in game phrases. But <clears throat> you cannot go out and, and buy a home. In reverse order, game time decisions. You have to be prepared beforehand because it's very competitive. They're gonna if you're trying to buy a three hundred thousand dollar house in Collin or Rockwall, Hunt County, something like that. Mm-hmm. They're going to be fifteen other people lined up. They're submitting offers. Right? Sure. Why are they going to choose you and your offer over the other one? Mm-hmm. Okay. I recommend you deal with a local lender such as Great Western Home Loans. Mm-hmm. Family, trusted, family business, small, understands everything, has the community presence. Right. But if you're going to go buy a house, you've got to get your financing in order first. You've got to get pre-qualified or pre-approved mm-hmm. before you even go shop. Don't even go talk to the realtor yet. They're going to tell you to turn around and go back and get pre-approved. Mm-hmm. So being prepared is is the biggest advice. If you're if you're less than five hundred thousand, if you're more than that, you're in the upper luxury market. It's not as competitive, uh, but you still have to be prepared. Mm-hmm. You know the same process. You, you've got to be financially prepared before you go and look. Do you? So you're saying that it's changed since the in over the last what ten years since? Yes. Yeah. Do you yeah. feel like it's more difficult now to get a house than it than it used to be? You know it's. <clears throat> Well, it, yes, it's more difficult now than it used to be, mm-hmm. all right, because back then it, you could have a 500 FICO score. Mm-hmm. Uh, you could not have a job, stated income, bad credit. It didn't matter. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, all, all of that's gone. All right? Now it's really the way it should be. You can still buy a health w- house with zero down, mm-hmm. with 3% down, with 3.5% down, with 5% down. Mm-hmm. It, you don't have to put 20% down as some of the national media outlets will portray. Mm-hmm. So it's not that difficult. It's really not unlike going to buy a nice car. You just have to document your income. Right. We're going to look at all three credit bureaus, not just one, like mm-hmm. a car dealer would do. Mm-hmm. You've got to prove your income and then prove you've got money in the bank, assets or reserves. Mm-hmm. Those, I mean, if you can do that, then buying a house is really pretty simple. Well, we have just got a little bit left, but plenty more to talk about with Roger Wakefield of Texas Green Plumbing and Jeff Lindgren, Vice President of the Happiness at Great Western Home Loans. Plenty more to come. Stay with us. This is Ask the Experts on Talk Radio 1190.